All right, the next theory that we're going to take a look at is Vygotsky's theory of development, which is also the sociocultural theory of development. So building upon the importance of social interaction, Vygotsky studied the role that social interaction plays in the development of cognition. So he was really focused on the social interaction between children, which are obviously growing, so he focused on children and their growth development, the interactions they had with those around them in the development of their cognition and their higher order learning. Now, Vygotsky actually unfortunately passed away at a very young age. She was only 38, so much of his theory um, was left um, unfinished, but from what we do know of what he did discover, um, and what he did theorize uh, gives us a lot of insight into um, this theory of development. So Vygotsky developed this theory and he said that babies have elementary mental functions and there are four of them. So these elementary mental functions, I'm going to just um, write shorthand MF for mental functions. So he said there are four of them. One of them is attention. So we have attention, we have sensation as babies, remember, we have perception, and we also have memory. So these are the four elementary mental functions that babies have. Now eventually through interaction with their environment, the sociocultural environment, these elementary mental functions are developed into more sophisticated and effective mental processes or strategies. And this is what we call our higher mental functions. So much of our th important learning um, that a child goes through occurs through the social interaction with a skillful tutor. So whether it's their teacher, their parents, um, just someone older. So this tutor acts as a model and they model their behaviors or they provide verbal instruction for the child. So the child often tries to understand the actions or instructions provided by the tutor, often the parent or the teacher, and then they internalize it and they use that to actually guide and regulate their own performance. So let's take a little trip down memory, memory lane. Think about when you were a little kid and when you were given your first puzzle to put together. I remember when I had my first puzzle and I was trying to solve it all alone, I had a really hard time. But I also remember my dad sitting right next to me and describing and demonstrating some basic techniques and tips and strategies to solve it. So he first told me to put or actually find all the corner and edge pieces and to separate those from the middle pieces. And he gave me a couple pieces to put together and kept on encouraging me as I went along. So eventually I became more competent and my father didn't have to sit next to me and he was just able to watch me solve the puzzle. I was able to learn um, I was actually able to work more independently. So higher mental functions are characterized more by independent learning and thinking. But that can only be cultivated by the elementary mental functions, which involve a tutor or um, someone older who acts as a guide through which we model our behavior. So according to Vygotsky, this type of social interaction um, involves cooperative and collaborative dialogue and that's what promotes this cognitive ability or development. So in this example I was telling you about, my dad was an MKO, which is a more knowledgeable other. So this is the first key term that I want you to know. MKO stands for more knowledgeable other. So this is one term that um, Vygotsky defined. So the more knowledgeable other is basically someone who has a better understanding or a higher ability level than the learner, which in this example was me. I was the learner. So this MKO has a higher level of, of understanding and ability with respect to whatever the task is at hand. So in this case, my dad was an MKO because he had a better understanding of how to put the puzzle together than I did. So an MKO is someone else 
But then we have to add in that sociocultural factor. So the interaction of myself, which is right here, with the MKO, the other person, is what leads to learning, which we'll put over here. And it's what also leads to these higher mental functions and in independence. Now the second key term that I want you to know is called the zone of proximal development. So ZPD for short, but I'll just write it out here. So it's called the zone of proximal development. And basically, um, I'm going to illustrate in a second for you um, what this looks like, but this zone of proximal development is the part where the most sensitive instruction or guidance should be given. So in my puzzle example, I was in that um, zone of proximal development because I was most sensitive to the information my father was giving me. I was um, between the ability of being able to do something and not being able to do something. And then that zone of guidance that I received is what allowed me to transition from the set of skills I already have to a more expanded set of skills by learning and um, going beyond what I um, had already known. So this um, is what develops these higher mental functions. So let's pretend that this is our right here. I'm going to draw a box. And this box right here represents everything that's beyond our reach and what we can't do. So I'm going to do put a big can't do over here. And then this little circle inside over here represents everything we can do currently. In our current state, it's what we can do. And according to Vygotsky, this zone of proximal development is the link between the two right in here your ZPD and that is the zone um, or the area that's most sensitive to instruction or guidance that allows the learner or child to develop the skills they already have and um, to use it on their own and go beyond into the areas they can't do to expand that learning so for example, I couldn't solve the jigsaw, pu jigsaw puzzle by myself when I was little. It would have taken me such a long time to do, or at all. But I was able to solve it following the interaction with my father. So the ZPD involves an interaction with the MKO. And eventually I developed that competence um, of that skill that I can also use in the future. So this arrow right here, I'm just going to show you is what represents all of our learning and our development. Now another important part of Vygotsky's theory was the importance of language. So I'll put that right over here. Number three is language. So according to Vygotsky, he said that language is the main means by which adults transmit info to children. And it's also um, a very powerful tool of intellectual adaptation. So he looked at private speech. Now private speech is also called internal speech. It's when people talk out loud to themselves, which happens most likely with what type of population? Do adults speak out loud to themselves a lot or do children? Well, it's actually children. Most children engage in private speech. And he, Vygotsky, sees this as a way for children to plan activities and strategies, and this aids in their development, this act of speaking to themselves, talking out loud. So he said that language is therefore an accelerator to thinking and understanding. So children who engage in large amounts of private speech are actually much more socially competent than children who do not use it that much. So he believed that language develops from social interactions for communication purposes. And later language ability becomes internalized as thought. So as we grow older, it becomes more internalized, which is called our inner speech. So basically thought is a result of language. That ability to think for ourselves and develop that independence of um, executing skills comes from this importance of language, according to Vygotsky. So there you have it. These are the three main parts of his theory.